Hi, I'm Malachi. Hi, I'm Melissa. And this is... Worship and Wine. Woo! And wouldn't you say that after this last Sunday, we could really use a glass of wine? For sure. Yeah, Melissa and I, we started leading worship again, and um, it's been a while since we've done it together. Mm. And this is our second time back doing it together. No, third. Third time yeah. doing it together again. Spaced out between many... Many weeks. Yeah. And you could say it wasn't our best. Eh, it didn't feel like our best. Yeah. What do you think didn't go that well? I don't know. Let's open a glass of wine and then we can talk about that. <laughs> All right. Should we talk about the wine? Yeah. For this episode, I chose Ivy Red from Dearly Beloved from the Central Coast here. Dearly Beloved, Ivy Red. Today we're going to be talking about the song, How He Loves, by John Mark McMillan. And so I thought this was the perfect bottle because it's a play on the marriage theme. Mm -hmm. We're the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. Weddings, marriage, love. What's funny is the tagline here on the back says, We are gathered here today to enjoy this bottle of wine. That's what it says? Well, I added the last bit. Oh. <laughs> we were gathered here today. You should have said that. It says, Dearly Beloved brings together the finest red wines from the Central Coast to create the perfect union of flavor. Union. Marriage. Whoa. The perfect union of flavor and aroma. Aromas of dark cherry, plum, and spicy vanilla oak vow to pair perfectly with blueberry, black currant, and toasted <laughs> vanilla bean flavors. All right, let's get to it. All right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, go ahead. What? Oh, nice. wow. I love that. So what's funny is I usually prefer the drier wines. And by now you should know that Melissa prefers the sweeter wines. Mm -hmm. To me, this almost leans more towards the dry. Hmm. But I think... It it's just very like flavorful, like though. It is. Yeah, I it think that's probably flavorful. why. And I think that's one of the reasons why I don't like the drier wines because I feel like I'm drinking like rubbing alcohol <laughs> it's like straight up like in my mouth <laughs> Here, let's do one of these what one of these wedding things <laughs> you're so cheesy <laughs> with this wine I be wed I be red so we're talking about Sunday Oh, man. I felt like when we walked in, like, it was just, like, weird. Did you feel like that? I didn't. We didn't get to talk about this, really. No, we didn't. No, this we didn't is really. why this is good, because we didn't really get to talk about this. It's been crazy. We're going to decompress yeah, we're live gonna, for yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to decompress. Hopefully, it's enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> we, we play at our church probably every other week. Mm -hmm. And usually, you show up, you know, two hours early uh, before the service, and you walk in. Mm -hmm. And there's generally, I feel, like a sense of excitement and anticipation. Yeah. Yeah, and we're, like, excited to be together with the other people on worship. But I think we, well, we kind of had a long night, too, the baby. We did have a long oh, night. Baby, man. This is why we haven't been doing this, because this guy has been keeping us up. He thinks it's a party in the middle of the night. Well, we're like, no, it's not a party in the middle of the night. <laughs> so that particular night, yeah. he thought it was a party. We walked in, and if I had to put a word to it, um, it felt quiet. Mm -hmm. So, like, we went through the set, and I felt like it was okay. Like, it, usually during rehearsal, we, I, felt, I feel a little bit better, but I feel like no. it wasn't eh, just like, eh, 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 eh. Yeah. Eh. We had a great band. Every single one of the musicians is an excellent musician. Mm -hmm. A lot of our team members who are multi-instrumentalists. Multi-instrumentalists? <laughs> Heck if I know. That's your <laughs> thing, not me. <laughs> um, there's quite a few members on our team who play multiple instruments. Mm -hmm. And we've been playing different instruments than what we usually play, mm -hmm. like our secondary instruments. And I noticed that this last Sunday... Every one of our musicians was playing their secondary instrument. So you consider guitar your secondary? My secondary. Drums my primary. I mean, yeah, but I think you're really good at both. So. Yeah, I am. But 
<laughs> I am. But it's my first time leading on electric in quite a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. And I didn't have a backup guitarist to sort of carry the weight. Yeah. That's, I don't know how you felt, but I, I generally know, like, that I'm called to do worship, and I, yeah. I feel that way. And I don't know, man, in the middle of it, I just felt like... I felt like I just want to, I just want to get off here in the middle and just be done. And it, it's not like anything went bad. It's not like we hit a lot of bad notes no. or, I, I don't know. It was just really funky. So, but I do have to say, I I talked to Mark. That's our pastor, and right after, which is pretty awesome. And and he's like, oh, it was so good. And I'm like thinking to myself, where were you? Like this whole time, where were you? Because you know, maybe I missed something. Maybe I missed the train. But, you know, he said he said some awesome, encouraging things after. And I felt like, gosh, like how many times do you or maybe our even our other worship leaders get off the stage and just feel like, man, that bombed, you know. And it's not that we're like thinking that it's about all about us, but you can kind of see when people are engaging with God by the way that they respond. So mm-hmm. if they're just standing there looking at you, oh, man, that's the worst so awkward so to all the worship leaders out there (laughs) who have those rough sundays where things may not have gone wrong but it just felt rough yeah cheers to you yeah cheers to you man this brings me actually back to a a thought process um and a video that i watched with i think it was uh was it jeremy riddle yeah it was jeremy riddle and he's talking about how it was like the worst set that he had yeah you remember remember that And so he's talking about how, like, it's, like, the worst that he had, and, like, he he was just frustrated, and I don't know, like, he didn't give up, though, even though he wanted to, and then that's when, like, a miracle took place, was in the middle of that, so. Yeah, the Holy Spirit just manifested physically through various wonders and signs. Yeah, so, I mean, just thinking about how awful we felt, you know, like, whoa, maybe like God is getting ready to do something and we just completely missed it because yeah. we were like so focused on like how sucky we felt, you know? I know you weren't alone. Like halfway through, I was looking at the time thinking, can we end early? I know. <laughs> we had like five more minutes to go and I'm like, okay, well, I guess we're going to see if, I don't know. I was just like, let's just see if I can I kept do looking something. Over, see if the pastor is ready to come up. <laughs> going to give the signal. <laughs> yeah. I remember um, at our old church, the one I grew up in, yeah. um, the worship leader would always give that signal to the pastor when it was time. He'd, yeah. he'd be on the keyboard, would look over to the pastor, and just give that one, that one, We're done. Head, that one head nod. We're done. You may come up yeah. now. We're done. <laughs> Please come now. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, we don't really have those signals right now. We need to work that out. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> At least with a situation like this. Oh. Oh, man, like, help us out here, please. <laughs> Somebody help us. Somebody save us. Somebody save us. Yeah, anyway, so, so yeah, we just wanted to, like, talk about that because we, we know what that's like, having moments where it's super frustrating and you're not yeah. really sure, like, what you should be doing. And mm. and it's crazy because Malachi and I have been, we've been doing, well, I've been doing worship since I was, oh, gosh, I think I was 13 and I'm 36. I've been doing it since kids' church. Yeah. Yeah. So a long time. And I mean, it just, there's just sometimes where it just really sucks. So you could be doing everything right and just won't feel right sometimes. Yeah. Well, let's talk about though. We had on, what was it? Friday. It was like a full blown, just like attack. It felt like, and I feel like that often happens when we're getting ready to lead worship yeah. in a compass in a capacity like this where it's to a lot of people and it happens to us pretty much every single time I would say. Yeah. yeah. Most of the time we're pretty good. Um, but this particular week was like, I felt like it was like disappointment after disappointment. It was after a rough week. Yeah. yeah. So it's like trying to from multiple areas. Yeah. And then not getting any sleep. Good Lord. Jesus have mercy. This episode, we're going to talk about how he loves. Yeah. John Mark McMillan. Ooh, talk about disappointment. Oh, a modern classic. Mm-hmm. The song itself isn't disappointing, but uh-uh. the story behind it is. Mm-hmm. Um, before I get into the story, do you remember the first time you heard How He Loves? I'm pretty sure that it was 
um, when we were at the church in the desert, mm-hmm. your parents' church, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so that would have been probably eight or nine years. Yeah. Yeah, I remember hearing the song for the first time. Before I actually heard the song, I remember hearing about it because the David Crowder band wanted to cover it. Oh, yeah. And they were in the studio, and David Crowder posted on their Twitter page asking about the term sloppy wet kiss, Mm -hmm. and if he thought it was an appropriate way to describe the love of God. Mm -hmm. They ended up settling on unforeseen kiss Mm -hmm. and getting permission from Jock Jark, from Jark, from Jarn Mark McMurrin. Cut. They got permission from John Mark McMillan to change it from Sloppy Wet Kiss mm. to Unforeseen Kiss. I'm empty. Whoa. John Mark so, McMillan. Bears beats Battlestar Star Galactica. Galactica. John Mark McMillan. So you're talking about disappointment. John Mark McMillan had this friend his friend was a youth minister his best friend actually and during a church prayer meeting his friend was praying he prayed out loud and said i'd give my life today if it would shake the youth of the nation Mm -hmm. and then that night he was in a multi-car accident and died wow that's crazy so that next day john mark mcmillan received the call from his friend's dad and John Mark McMillan wrote How He Loves mm-hmm. Out of That Pain. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I don't know about you, but if my best friend died, I bet the last thing I would be thinking about is the love of God. Pause. Unpause. No, wait. Pause. Okay. Unpause. See, I... Pause. Unpause. Okay. Okay. I think that this is really interesting because he literally, this guy, Stephen Coffey, who passed away and the song that was written about him by John Mark McMillan. <laughs> Whew, lots of words here. John. Mark. McMillan. McMillan. Okay. I'll call him John. You could say John M.M. J.M.M. Yeah. I find it interesting. Here, he, this friend says, like, if, if I could reach these people and literally this song is huge and um, yeah, it's one of the most sung songs yeah in churches today yeah and and even so it was like what even this sunday i was actually wanting to move towards that song me too what oh my god we should have done that Holy Spirit. it might not have sucked so bad <laughs> well i was like trying yeah anyways i was, that's I was, I was in my head <gasps> I was like think, i was singing it I, could you not hear me i could mic? and i was trying to figure out how to transition dude Man. You complete me. Okay. Pew. 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 <laughs> but yeah, I was thinking this weekend we should have done that because of what? Mark, our Millen. pastor. No, oh. our pastor <laughs> was saying. You think about that. And, you know, death for us is like so traumatic, but like we believe in heaven. So why would we be upset like that his life actually was used? For that purpose, and he—that's what he wanted. Obviously, it was a cry of his heart. Maybe, yeah. maybe people thought it was going to happen a different way, but that's not the way that it happened. You know. Right. So. Work on that so skill. So. <laughs> there are multiple variations of sloppy wet kiss. <laughs> really. <What>? Fact. <laughs> there are multiple variations of sloppy wet kiss. What is what is your favorite? <laughs> it's just funny because like when you say that because you're talking about a sloppy wet kiss, so it's like there's multiple. Right? No, don't. <laughs> I definitely. So there are multiple variations of sloppy wet kiss. Okay, I. What is your? What's your favorite? I definitely don't prefer sloppy wet kiss. Although I don't really understand the meaning behind heaven meeting earth like a sloppy wet kiss. Mm -hmm. Unforeseen reminds me of when we were dating. So that's like a whole nother ball game. So I definitely don't like that one. Um, No, we're not telling the story. I'm not telling the story. Never telling that story. That could be a QA and a like someday down the road. If you ever (laughs) see us in person, 
ask us about the unforeseen kiss. Oh lord. Okay. And we'll tell we'll tell it in person. Moving on. I love passionate kiss. Unforeseen just seems weird to me. Mm. Actually, I'd love to know why the David Crowder band chose to do unforeseen because it's just kind of like a like sloppy wet is like like a like passionate type of or like an intimate type of well I don't saying I don't but, like unforeseen because you're gonna get so slapped with that kiss. The lyric is heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's referring to when Jesus came to earth. Okay, yeah. So Oh well I guess unforeseen would be would be right it's then. Unforeseen too. in a sense because they didn't expect it Jesus the Messiah to come as a baby mm -hmm. From a lower middle class family, I kind of almost wonder. To become as a king, right? But it's not really unforeseen because there were prophecies that the Messiah would come. Mm. I kind of so. almost wonder if maybe the David Crowder crew went to John Mark McMillan and said, "Like, what is this part about? Like, is this yeah. about? Like, what do you mean here? I don't know. I, if you're like me, I like to know what people mean with yeah. lyrics sometimes." You do, he, he doesn't care. This guy, he doesn't even know what half the lyrics are. But anyway, shabba do do ba do do sloppy mm -hmm. wet kiss. Yeah, he's just about playing the music. those four chords exactly over and over. So I can see why unforeseen would be would be good, but Mister Biblical over here, it wouldn't be unforeseen be, in your like perspective yeah. because there's been there's prophecies. So then that leads us to passionate because I think passionate would be like. Well, to me, if we're referring to Jesus coming yeah. down, wow, like talk about serious passion. Well, so. the word passion actually comes from... <laughs> what? I'm being serious. The word passion actually comes... I know comes... you are. <laughs> the word passion actually means Jesus dying on the cross. That's what the word passion means? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Check this out. Hey, Siri. What does passion mean? Strong and barely controllable emotion. Do you want to hear the remaining one? Say. Read number two. The suffering and death of Jesus. Wow. Oh my gosh, that makes me want to cry. Passion. Really? The death and suffering of Jesus. What the freaking heck? Guys, this is what's happening right now. <laughs> I didn't even know. Passionate. Yeah. Passionate kiss. You, you know what's crazy? I, I don't know what it was just recently. I know we're going to be talking about the song a little more, but uh, just thinking about the depth that God loves us and we should have been, in my mind, this is in my mind, this is not theology based, but in my mind, we should have been completely done away with. Because like, not only did we listen to Satan and like how God could have completely abolished us. He just yeah. didn't. So that is just still true. And then for like him to be like, yeah, like I think I'll like go ahead and like exp have the human experience and like die for these people in the most horrible way possible. And could you imagine you create this being, they go off the deep end and then you're like, Hmm. Let me adopt them as my own mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. No, that's the trip. I guess I could liken it to, I mean, our children, because we forgive them <laughs> all the For time. For not sleeping through the night. Well, not only that, but Symphony, man, she gets a little crazy on us sometimes. She yells at us and runs in the other room. She's seven. <laughs> Lord, hello. You know, but... Yeah. But the next day, I'm not, I never, like, think about that. I never, like, hold that over her. No, not at all. I'm, I totally forget about it. So I'd say I really like Sloppy Wet Kiss because the fact that Jesus did come the way that he did mm -hmm. as a regular baby in a regular family. Mm -hmm. Wait, a regular family? In a regular family? In a regular dysfunctional family. Oh, gosh. Very dysfunctional. Unwed <laughs> couple. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I kind of choked on it. <laughs> I got a little pepper note. Is there any more? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Is there pepper? No. Pepper? No pepper. <laughs> so the fact that Jesus came. This is still my first little cup, okay? Just want you guys to know. The fact that Jesus came to a regular dysfunctional family, mm -hmm. in human terms, you would say that that was sloppy. Oh my gosh. And it makes no sense. Yeah. I, I don't understand how people don't believe in him. And and the reason being is because there is no there is no other belief on earth that is like this. There's no other thought process um, of even humanity where we're like, we're just gonna like give and you can like beat the crap out of me and like I will still love you and forgive yeah. you and I will wait for you to like come to me whenever you're ready. Like I will keep calling you and wooing you <laughs> towards me. Like Yeah. There's no other belief system like that. Everything else no. is like work based, like work yeah. on yourself and like see how you're gonna make it happen and you know, meditate. You know, I'm not not that I'm knocking meditation, but I'm just saying, you know. Meditate on the word of God. <laughs> so the song is like pretty amazing. Like uh, yeah. even I mean we could sing that and I will still feel that same Oh yeah. Passion. Should we do it? Sure. Okay, let's try. He is jealous of me. He loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me oh how he loves us so oh how he loves us how he loves us so Worship and Wine, and if you like what you saw, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell, that way you can be notified anytime we post a new video. Yeah.